Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. Have you ever wanted to make a notebook, but you find some of the techniques a little challenging? Even some of the techniques I've shown you? Well, stick around because I'm going to show you another sweet way to get those notebooks. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so here's what we're going to be making today. And this notebook will not require that you have a cinch binding machine or um, the glue technique that I use on a lot of my books. This is going to be a very simplified notebook. But when you're finished, you're going to end up with a very beautiful notebook that will be truly flexible and able to be bent backwards. And if you want it to, you could actually use some clear contact paper on the outside. I'm not. I'm just going to leave this in its natural state of the paper. But I am going to show you just how easy it is to make this. So what we'll need to make our project are two chipboard pieces and I use a medium weight chipboard. And if you're interested in that chipboard, I have a link in the description box. The chipboard size is five by seven. And then we have two pieces of beautiful decorative cardstock that will be the outside jacket. And these pieces measure six by eight. And then I have two beautiful pieces of decorative cardstock that will be the inside liner. And these pieces measure four and three quarters by six and three quarters. And then I have 100 sheets of plain white writing paper. And this is just regular old copier paper, printer paper, just very lightweight. And this measures four and three quarters by six and seven eighths. And then we'll be using three one inch ring binders. And I got these from Amazon. I will have a link in the description box if you're interested. If not, you can use key rings or whatever else you might have. You don't necessarily have to have these as long as you have something that you can open and feed through the holes. And so the first thing that we'll be doing is we're going to take our two covers that measure six by eight and our two pieces of chipboard that measure five by seven. And we are going to place these down. Once we have them placed down, I'm going to use my big old spatula to get that nice and stuck. And because this is a thicker paper, I will be using my stylus, placing my stylus on the paper, pressing it against the chipboard, and then just driving into the paper to create a score. And I'll do this on all four sides and hopefully this will minimize any cracking that might happen. Do the same thing with our second piece. And then we're going to take it, stand it up, and just kind of get those edges ready to be folded over. And if you guys hear any hammering in the background, I am working from my backyard today. And there are some workmen at the house behind me, so there is some hammering going on. But hopefully the sounds of the birds will drown out the sounds of the hammer. So now I'm just going to go in and miter my edges. And I'll do this on all four sides. So when I'm mitering, all I'm doing is making an angle cut right at the corner so that when I fold over, I'll have that nice professional edge to my corners. And we'll do the same thing on this side. And now we'll just do a wrap around fold over on all four sides and I am going to stick this down using my reptile glue. Go ahead and place it on all four sides. Now I can take it, stand it up, and use my big old spatula to help get that stick started. And I will go over that again. I'm just getting my initial stick going. 
And then I'll do the same thing to my second one. So we're just going to go ahead and put down our glue. We'll fold over our edges and get this piece stuck. I am just going to fold over, use my big old spatula to get that stuck. And I do notice just a little bit of cracking with my paper and I thought it might happen because it really is kind of thick. So I am going to do just a little distress technique on this in a few minutes, just to kind of make it look like that was always a part of my plan. So we're gonna get that stuck. All right, so now that we have our two covers, we need to place the inside liner. I have already placed adhesive on the back of my liner pieces, but to place the adhesive, I would not use glue on this because it might cause your board to warp. So I would just place my strips of tape to cover that chipboard. And I would go around the outside edges of my liner piece with a little bit of glue just to make sure that it sticks. So I would go along all four corners with my glue just to make sure that I have a nice stick. So I am just going to take my first piece and put it down. Get it nice and stuck. And then I'll take my second piece and we're gonna place down this beautiful inside liner. Get that nice and stuck. And so this is the front and this is the back. Because I did have just a little bit of cracking, I am going to take the sanding block that came from either Lowe's or Home Depot. It actually belonged to Mike. But as always, once I get my hands on it, it becomes mine. So all I'm doing is going along and just making that a little bit rougher looking so that that cracking that I had and my cracking was right there. It happened right there, but now you can't even tell because it looks like this was always meant to look like this. So I am just going along this with the sanding block. You can be as rough with this as you want you could even go in on the inside and remove some of that color, but I am fine with how that looks. So now we have two really nice exterior covers for the book. And now we have our 100 pages that will go on the inside and sit just like that. So here's what we need to do. I am going to punch my holes using my cinch. You don't need a cinch to be able to do this part. You just need something that will help you to punch holes. So I am going to punch three holes. Try to get one centered, one here, and one here. So if you have a three hole punch, you will need to punch through your chipboard and then match those holes up with the paper. That is the best way to do this if you don't have a multi-hole punch. So I do have this We Are Memory Keepers hole punch. I can actually take a stack of my papers, put it in and punch a hole, and then punch three separate holes on each piece of paper. And then this will also punch a hole through my medium weight chipboard. So if you have a hole punch, that's going to make this a whole lot easier to be able to make this project, which is going to make it extremely easy for me to make this project. But as I said, you don't need a cinch. You simply need a way of being able to punch holes. And for those of you who have not seen a cinch before, this is what mine looks like. They have had several generations to come out since I got this one, which I think is the original generation cinch, but they all basically work the same. You have these 12 pegs, and when the pegs are pushed in, you're going to have a hole punch in that position. In order for the hole not to punch, you simply pull the peg out and it'll stop that punch from happening when you pull down on the handle. Now, 
right here you have the word center. And what that means is this will help you find the center of your book when you put it in. So I know that my book is seven inches long. That means that I have this ruler right here and I need to just take it and set the center point at three and a half so that the half mark is aligned with that center point and that'll put me in the center of my book. So when I put this down, we will punch holes in both of these separately. But when you do, you need one of them facing up like this and then you need one where the inside liner is facing up. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in and I have three pegs pushed in so that's going to give me three holes on my book. So I am just going to go ahead, pull down and now I have my three holes. I'll take this one which is my back cover, place it in with the liner facing up and punch. And so now I have perfectly aligned holes. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my pieces of paper. The beauty of the cinch is that it will punch through 25 sheets of paper at a time. I'm not going to do 25. I'm just going to take some stacks and punch through. And you can see I have my holes and these holes will align with the holes that I already have punched. And we just keep doing that. So if you have a cinch, you can make these books in a cinch. But if you don't, don't get discouraged because you can make these books anyway. You'll just need to manually punch through your stacks of paper. And so now that I have all of my holes punched, I can just fold this down, snap that into place, and put my cinch away. So now I can take my 100 stacks. We can place those in our book. And now we can take the ring, and I want that big chunky piece to be on the back, so I'll feed it through like that. And then I'll close it. We're going to put in the others and you can see the simple elegance that's starting to take shape. So we're going to take that third ring and we're going to put that third ring in just like that. And so now I have this sweet little notebook and when I open it up, you will notice that once again, my liner piece is upside down. And y'all know that has got to be my signature move on my crafts because it happens all the time, no matter how careful I think I'm being, and it happens. But you know what? We don't let things like that stop us. That will not ruin this project. So we are going to do some light decorating to this project, and then we'll be done. So what I'm going to do is I have this cut apart that says confidence has no competition. I am going to take just a little bit of glue, place some glue on the back, and I'm going to open this and we're going to put it right here on the inside, especially since everything is upside down. We'll just put that right there. So when you open it, it says confidence has no competition. Then I have these wonderful little stickers. I am going to take one out and I'm going to take this one here that says gentle, kind, patient, graceful, full of joy. And we're just going to place that right here at the bottom of the first page. So now we have that sweet little look there. So then I'm going to take just a couple of the stickers and I'm going to place one right there. And it says, laugh often. Then I'm going to Come over to the back side of the book and the cellophane package that had the stickers in it, I am going to use it on the back side of the book. So I am just going to bring in my ruler. I'm not even going to measure this guys. I'm just going to cut off a piece of the cellophane wrapper. And 
and just trim it away. So that I have this nice little cellophane pocket that we are going to glue right here and the reptile glue will dry clear so you won't have to worry about that showing. Now for those of you who are interested in this size, this is four by four and three quarters. So I am just going to take my glue and I'm going to run glue along the edge, along the bottom, and along the other edge. Then I'll just run a strip here and a strip here. Now I'm going to take this and we're going to place it in down at the bottom just in case you have a really long sticker pack. And then I'm just going to move that glue with my big old spatula and I'm moving it away from that opening. So we're going to let that dry and then I'll be right back. All right, now that my pocket is somewhat dry, it's not completely dry, but it is dry enough for me to slip the sticker sheets back in the sleeve so that a portion of the sheets stick up. That way, whoever gets this book will have this awesome sticker sheet that they can then go back if they want to use some of these stickers throughout um, writing in this book, they will have that. And so there we have it, y'all. We have a simply beautiful three ring notebook that we made using binder rings. So this gives you another option for being able to make notebooks if you don't want to use the glue method or you don't have a cinch. You can very easily make this using a hole punch. Just make yourself a template, then use that template to punch holes in all pieces of your book. And then you too will end up with a book just as beautiful as this one. So I am going to bring that first one back in so that we can see all of this gorgeous goodness these are so beautiful and y'all know that I love blues. So having this blue look is just right up my alley. I am so in love with both of these. So I'm just going to open it so that you can have a look at the inside of both. And then I'll flip to the back side of each so that you're able to see that each one has that clear pocket in the back. And all I did was use the original sleeve that the sticker sheet was in to make that pocket on the back. So of course it's going to fit it as if it was meant to, because it was. But I think it's just an awesome idea to add to this particular notebook. And there are the two finished books. Guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this project. If you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join my amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.